Time is running out for Eurozone leaders to save the single currency as they prepare for 11th hour talks in Brussels. Germany and France are pushing to change EU treaties to create a fiscal union and introduce tougher budget rules. However, the European Council president believes they can achieve the same goals without altering existing treaties which would need lengthy ratifications. And the British Prime Minister warned he wouldn't agree to anything which damaged the UK's role in the European market. Credit ratings giant Standard & Poor's has uh, also added to the sense of urgency as it threatened to downgrade 15 Eurozone countries and their bailout fund just earlier this week. Let's talk then to investigative journalist Tony Gosling. He's on the line now from London. Tony, evening. If the British Prime Minister was to make good on his threat and refuse to sign any new treaty, do you think Merkel and Sarkozy would have enough support then to push through their agenda? Well, it's quite possible since Britain is out of the Eurozone. But, you know, I have to say here, a bit like Greece, why bother asking the people? This is actually, we're supposed to be living in a democratic Europe, Kevin, and uh, when major changes are being made to what effectively is a form of European sovereignty, I mean, as most of the countries in the Eurozone are now finding out, that actually the European Central Bank has far more influence over their affairs than their national governments, then we need to go to the people. It seems that David Cameron and the Conservative Party as a whole are really a bit schizophrenic over this whole Europe issue. They've got on one side they've got all their friends, the financial elite, that want them to go one way. And on the other side they are the main Eurosceptic party in Britain and they're being pulled in the other direction. So quite which side of this whole debate Cameron is going to face uh, is really a, a completely open question. Although I would guess that he will go with the financial oligarchy. Of course he's quite out of these discussions as Britain is not part of the Eurozone and in a way he's butting in in. But I think Merkozy, you know, this whole Merkel Sarkozy coalition, isn't really interested in what the people want. And my worry is what is the validity of a treaty of such importance when the people aren't on side? How much say should Britain have anyway? As you say, it doesn't even use the euro, it's not in the eurozone. How much say should it have in maybe scuppering the, uh, the, the Merkozy plan? Well, that would be an interesting mission for David Cameron. I'm not sure if he's, he's got the guts to go and scupper this. I mean, I think ultimately it's quite clear to me the euro has been a failure and that the individual countries, if they want to retain their sovereignty, as I believe individual countries do, then they're going to have to go back to their uh, original country, currencies, the drachma, to the, uh, to the uh, lira, etc. And what we're discovering here, I think, is the playing out of a plot which has been going on for the last 50 years or so across Europe, which is in order to bring in a political union controlled from the centre, an undemocratic fashion, of course we know that Brussels is very, very little democracy involved in Brussels, uh, which is a kind of European dictatorship. And what bothers me is that actually with, we, we're already seeing this with uh, Greece and Italy now run by Goldman Sachs, eff effectively are dictatorships. Uh, this is the kind of thing that I'm afraid if Adolf Hitler was still alive, he would be smirking and smiling now saying, ah, oh, this looks rather good. This is a Euro dictatorship, the kind of thing I dreamed of. Interesting point. I mean, at face value, have the uh, Brussels technocrats got anything to bring to the party, do you think? You know, they are supposed to be um, forming this, this golden way, this golden path forward, assuming it's not as sinister as well, you say it is. Well, I don't think they have anything to bring, no. And I think that what's going on is a constant kind of fudge. There's a, a kind of uh, uh, pulling the wool over people's eyes as regards economics here. It's quite clear to me what needs to happen now is nationalisation of these zombie banks, these bankrupt banks who have fantastic amounts of junk on their balance sheets. They need to be taken over by national governments before they crash, which will be, I mean, if they do crash, will be a disaster for all our individuals across Europe. They will, may well be losing their savings, and also the cash points may seize up. This will be a, a dreadful crisis. So that individual sovereign governments, like the Treasury here behind me in London, have to act now uh, in order to make sure that those banks uh, are individual, you know, basically to take charge of their national situation, rather than to allow a disastrous kind of Euro, uh, almost a new Euro fascism to take over with the European Central Bank and these Goldman Sachs financiers actually running the, the, the policies, that is the tax government policies and the financial policies right across Europe. It's a, a kind of fascist nightmare dream, that the, thing, the sort of thing they've been wanting for years. But I think we have to, as patriots, and I would hope David Cameron's one of those, have to actually resist this temptation to go into a massive financial political union. Tony, briefly, are you expecting anything substantive to come out from this key summit Thursday and Friday? 
Uh, I'm really not sure. I think maybe another fudge. But I mean, it has to be said immediately. Uh, David Cameron has said there won't be a referendum in Britain about this. We have his opposite number, also Conservative, Boris Johnson, Mayor of London, saying he thinks that there will. So you see what I'm saying here is that we've got a split here uh, nationally, even in the ruling party, the Conservative Party. Uh, as for what's going to happen uh, at the end of the week, it's anyone's guess. But I think we'll have another fudge. These these uh, big Euro summits seem to me rather like press gangs where you've got a bunch of financial people just trying to bully our political representatives into signing on the dotted line or else. Tony Gosling, investigative journalist on the line from London tonight. Thanks for being on RT.